Uh, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys. The first story I want to talk about today, I've got some interesting updates of Michael Crizzo at just one day out from the EVLS Prog Pro, where he's going to be making his pro debut and attempting to earn his qualification for the Olympia. Now, these were posted by, I believe, his coach, Alexander H.L.O. Blick Hoblick. So you've got a posing video, and then you've got three stationary shots. You've got a front lat spread, a front double bicep, and an abs and thighs. And honestly, you know, one of the things that a lot of people have criticized Michael Crizzo for is his midsection, saying he doesn't really have that deeper separated abs, especially um, his lower abs. And you can still see that here, but it doesn't look as bad um, as I thought it would look. I do agree with most of the criticism that he really needs to work on those lower abs, because if you look, you can really only see the top four and below that, it gets a little blurry, it gets a little cloudy, and that could just be genetic, that could just be his structure. But I do think that's something potentially holding him back. And in the video, um, I thought his midsection looked a little bit distended for one day out, um, but that could just be because he carb loaded and, and tried to carb up um, at this point in his prep, at this point in his peak week, rather. So in the abs and thighs, it didn't look that bad. But then in the other two shots, I thought in the uh, front lat spread and the uh, front double bicep, I thought his, his midsection looked a little bit washed out, which I was concerned about if these updates really are at one day out from the Prog Pro. So I've got to be honest and admit my first impression of these updates was I was a little bit underwhelmed because I really want to see a totally shredded version of Crizzo. Now, you know, we could have, I feel like we could have a similar situation with the Olympia Amateur and he still might not be 100% peak for this show and he could be saving his best package um, for the Olympia and just doing enough to win this pro show because in all honesty like I said it's really not the deepest lineup he's probably not going to have to really suffer to win this one so we might see something similar to what we saw at the Olympia amateur and again you know Enrico Hoffman is a guy in this lineup that I really like his physique He's a guy that already beat Michael Crizzo. He actually beat Crizzo to earn his pro card back in 2017. So he's beaten him once. I think there is a potential he could beat him again. And one of the reasons why I say that is the reason that I pointed out just now. I want to show this latest picture um, of Enrico from the front at six days out from the show. Because one of the things that impressed me the most about Enrico at the Tsunami Pro, where James Hollings had qualified for the Olympia, was how good his abs look, how deep how separated, how defined. And I think that's something that when, if you put him next to Crizzo, I think that's something that's going to expose what is really one of Crizzo's weaknesses. And I think his midsection, while it doesn't look horrible, I think it is probably a pinpointed weak point in his physique. And you put him next to a guy like Enrico, that's something that's going to look even more obvious when you've got a guy with crazy abs standing right next to you. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Looking at Crizzo's physique at one day out, these posing shots, the video, how do you think he's looking? Do you think he's going to win the show in Prague, which is tomorrow, by the way, Saturday, the 29th? So make sure you subscribe because I will be covering that tomorrow. And make sure you like the video. If you are excited to see Michael Crizzo make his pro debut, personally, I still think Crizzo's going to win. I'm not totally convinced that he's going to look crazy here. Now, next up in the news, the seven week out from the Olympia physique updates are starting to come in, starting with Blessing Awodabu um, posting these, uh, I think it was just a rear lat spread, yeah, but still posting a posing video physique update at seven weeks out. And honestly, you know, Blessing, his, I think probably his best attribute of his physique is his back. So I think, of course, he's going to look good in this update. But I think a lot of guys right now at seven weeks out, to me, look tighter than Blessing looks. I like Blessing's physique a lot. I think he looked really good at the shows that he won this year, and I think he deserved to win those shows. Um, but that being said, I really just, I, I don't see him as a top six guy this year. The top six, I think, is going to be so solid. I see him more in like the seven through 10 range. And I'm, I'm curious to know where you guys see Blessing, because I know Blessing has a lot of fans. Um, where do you see Blessing placing at the Olympia? Let me know down below. Because, for example, here's another guy that qualified on points. Justin Rodriguez. Um, and Justin, at seven weeks out, looks insane. He looks crazy dry, vascular, shredded. And that's probably because he already competed at the Legion show. So what I'm guessing he's doing is he never stopped dieting. He never stopped prepping. He just continued. And that might give him an advantage going into the Olympia. Or it could be a disadvantage. Because I honestly think the reason why Justin wasn't looking as good as he could have looked 
at some of the shows later on in the season. I think his physique was tired. I think he was competing too much and he wasn't giving his body a break. And it, I guess we're, I guess we're going to find out if just hammering and continuing to prep after Legion is going to be a good decision or not. And I also know he switched coaches again. So he started out with Abdullah. Then he worked with AJ Sims, a.k.a. Cement Factory, and that was for two years. Then he only worked with George Farah for the Legion Sports Festival prep, and now he's working with somebody named Eduardo, who honestly, I don't even know who that is. And it kind of makes me wonder what his process is, if it's like every time he doesn't do as well as he thinks he should or he doesn't win a show or whatever, he just drops the coach and said, well, you didn't get me where I wanted to be, so i got to try something new rather than sticking with a coach and trying to figure it out with a coach over time as the coach starts to learn his body more. But anyway, my point with bringing up Justin was the fact that he didn't win a show to get to the Olympia. He's qualifying on points. Blessing won two shows to get to the Olympia. So there's a different, there's a big difference between the two. And I think at this point in his prep, Justin looks way ahead of where Blessing is at. And they're, they're probably going to place in a similar range is what I would think. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you guys think I'm wrong and Blessing is going to be like a top six guy? I just think that this lineup is so competitive that Blessing would probably find himself trying to get into the top 10 rather than trying to get into the top six. I mean, look at look at the lineup. It's really pretty incredible. Now, next up in the news, we've talked a lot about the Masters Mr. Olympia lately. And I saw this recent update from Victor Martinez um, that I thought was really impressive. And we did learn um, recently, I, I was watching Primetime Muscle, which is like the Olympia and uh, Muscle and Fitness's official uh, YouTube channel. And they have, they have like this little news show that they do once a week. And they were talking about the Masters Olympia on there. And they said that the Masters Olympia category is going to be 45 plus. For men, so now we know whether it's going to be 45 or 50 plus. Um, it's not. It's going to be right in the middle, 45 plus. So that makes sense. It seems like a pretty good, um, a pretty good, a pretty good age there. It's not too old, not too young. I think that's going to encapsulate a lot of people. Um, if it were 50 plus, I think it would exclude a lot of people. For example, Victor Martinez is 49 years old, and I think for the number of years that we haven't seen him compete, and I think for his age, he looks he looks incredible in this update, and I, I really think that there's potential with so many of these guys um, that we could have a really impressive Masters Olympia in 2023, these guys that are training anyway. Um, and he says in the caption of that post, remember the time, if the gods give you health, keep doing it. And he says it keeps himself from ever saying he used to work out, competing or not, it's a life thing. Slow down, but never stop. So again, I'm just kind of building this Masters Olympia dream team in my mind. Let me know in the comments below who you would like to see come back and compete at the Masters Olympia. Um, they brought up a good point on that primetime muscle, Kamal El Gargni. He's 50 plus. Even though he's a 212 guy, he's probably one of the best 50 plus bodybuilders in the world right now, if not the best. That would be something for him. He's an active competitor. He could come in and probably pick up an Olympia title, even though it is a Masters Olympia title. And the final story that I've got for you guys today, we did get a physique update from Breon Ainsley at the Dubai Muscle Fest. Everybody is at this Dubai uh, this Dubai Pro Show, whatever exactly it is. It's got an expo and all this other stuff. But we're seeing all kinds of crazy collabs, all kinds of physique updates, all kinds of training videos. You got Ronnie Coleman training with Larry Wheels out there. But I wanted to give Breon credit here because in this update, he looks a lot sharper than he looked in a lot of the other updates that we've seen of him for this Olympia prep. So maybe there is a chance he's still going to do classic physique. It's just the reason why... I, I didn't think and still kind of doubt that he would be able to is in the past he's had problems making weight for classic physique in this prep he's looked bigger and a little bit more I don't want to say out of shape but he's looked a little bit more fluffy than usual during this prep so you would think if he's been having these troubles making weight he wouldn't really want to be pushing the scale at all compared to previous preps for this prep but here I think he looks much better is my point but I also kind of want to go on record and say that I think this will be the first year that Breon places outside of the top three. That's my prediction. That's my early prediction for classic physique. I don't think he's going to crack the top three this year. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that in the comment section down below. That's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you leave a like, a big thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. And as always, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power. Signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. 
My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day. Dancing in the gloom Everybody's feeling warm and bright It's such a fine and natural sight Every Dancing in the good light Everybody's feeling warm and bright It's such a fine and natural sight Everybody's dancing in the good